have all dreamt of owning that house, condominium, or lot to start our family life. However, not all of us can afford to buy that dream house and need the help of housing loan agencies like Pag-ibig. Many people are still unsure on how to apply for a loan or what the requirements are. Pag-ibig Fund is a savings program of the government. So yung contribution mo po, ah, talagang napakaliit lang. Uh, ideally, it should be 2% of the basic pay. But ano po siya, uh, nakakater lang po talaga siya sa 100 pesos. So ang, ang, ang share din ng employer, 100 pesos. Savings lang siya talaga. Kaya ang loanable amount is based doon sa total savings niya. Pag-ibig fund talaga ay nagiging sagot po sa mga katugunan po talaga kami sa mga pangangailangan ng bawat miyan po. For some, they have already applied for a loan with Pag-ibig and have difficulty keeping up with payments for one reason or the other. We cannot process the paper, the application, kasi wala tayong makitang deduction, wala tayong makitang remittance. So, yun nga yung sinasabi namin na kung makakapagbigay po ng proof or document yung isang miyembro na dinidakan siya pero hindi na remit, yun po yung kakasuhan natin. Pero syempre, we will give them due notice at saka demand letters for them to remit whatever deductions po yung ine-effect nila sa payslip ng isang miyembro. How can one apply for a pag-ibig loan? What are the requirements when applying for a pag-ibig loan? What are the ways for people not to be delinquent with their payments? Good evening, you are watching Legal Help Desk on the Solar News Channel. This show is about making the law work for you by giving legal advice on topics that matter to you. I'm Attorney Karen Jimeno. And I'm Attorney Rod Nepomuceno. Tonight, we will discuss Pag-ibig Loan Applications. What you need to know on how to apply for Pag-ibig Loans and what you need to do to avoid lapses in payments. Our guest for tonight is Attorney Darlene Marie Berberabe, President and CEO of the Pag-ibig Fund. Good evening and thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you for having me. Uh, good evening, Karen. Good evening, Ron. Okay, Attorney Len, right? Yes. All right. Yeah. So, no less than yeah. the President and I know. CEO of Pag-ibig. I know. I, I want to, makes me want to apply for a loan. Approved. After. Approved. Approved. Okay. Okay. So, well, let's start off with... Um, uh, who could apply for Pag-ibig Loans? Uh, we all know that it's a contribution system, a saving system, as mentioned in the, the VTR. No? So, can you tell us uh, how the system works okay. and uh, who can apply for a loan? Okay, so uh, a Pag-ibig member, mm -hmm. who are Pag-ibig Fund members, so uh, all SSS members, so from the private sector, also GSIS members, so from the government service, self-employed uh, should be Pag-ibig Fund members. Uh, overseas Filipino workers are also Pag-ibig Fund members. So any Pag-ibig Fund member who has 24 monthly total savings with Pag-ibig Fund, so that means uh, 200 pesos per month mm -hmm. times, um, times, times uh, 24, uh, that person will already be eligible for a Pag-ibig Fund housing loan. Now, if we are talking about the multi-purpose loan, because we have different uh, products, we have housing loan, which is the principal mm -hmm. product of Pag-ibig Fund, we have the multi-purpose loan, and we also have the calamity loan. So for the multi-purpose loan and calamity loan, the eligibility is that um, the member should be contributing for at least two years, mm -hmm. so that uh, we can already say something about the regularity of their payments. Okay. Then they can avail of uh, the loan, which is up to 80% of their total savings. So for example, if they have already saved 10,000 pesos mm -hmm. in Pag-ibig Fund, they can borrow uh, 8,000 pesos for the multi-purpose so loan. Mm -hmm. okay. 80%. Attorney Len, you mentioned kanina na these savings that you have with Pag-ibig, I think it's easier for those that are employed either in the private or public sector kasi the Employers have the obligation means that talagang sila yung nagbabawas and they give it to pag-ibig. But if you're self-employed or an OFW, of course, working for a foreign company na hindi naman magko-communicate with pag-ibig, how do you make sure that you're part of this system? Okay, so you are correct in your observation. So that's why, uh, and also we have links with SSS and GSIS and BIR and also the local government units for uh, which are the businesses and we require for their uh, employees to be members of Pag-ibig Fund. Now, it's a different challenge for us to make sure that our OFWs and the self-employed 
uh, the professionals also become our members. So how do we ensure that? So we also partnered with POEA to make sure, for example, for our OFWs, everyone who leaves the country uh, will be required by POEA to update their Pag-ibig contribution or to make sure uh, that, they, that they are members and they update their contributions. Once they're out of the country, we also have linked with the uh, Department of Labor, with the Labor Attaché in our embassy, so that every OFW who is returning to the country will also be required to update their Pag-ibig contribution. Mm -hmm. Now, with the um, self-employed, we have partnered with a lot of banks, uh, uh, remittance facilities, agencies, so that, for example, anyone who has a credit card that's po powered by Visa or MasterCard can just pay online. Uh, you just go to our website, the pagibigfund.gov.ph, and they could um, pay through their credit cards oh. the monthly contribution. So, right. but it's a different challenge because they don't have the employer. Uh, if uh, they don't have the employer who has the obligation to remit to us the uh, their contributions. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're a little behind in, in your contributions, I mean, there are situations like that where the employer wasn't able to remit it, and you, then you wanted to take a loan. Um, is there a way to, to rectify it uh, and, and just, let's say, contribute uh, what, you ha yeah, what you failed to contribute in order for you to secure yeah, so, a, a loan? So uh, we just would uh, ask them to update their uh, contributions. contributions. Now, for the members who have problems uh, like that, they have to report to us. So especially if they see in their pay slip that they have deductions that their employers are deducting the contributions but are not remitted to us. So we will uh, enforce, yeah. uh, we will send them a demand letter. Okay. Uh, we could also sue them no. uh, for violation of our uh, charter because mm -hmm. that's an obligation of the, em of the employer. So you make it easier for the employees because you go after the employers Employee. directly. Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. Now let's answer a few questions from our viewers. Our first question comes from Alfred and it reads, I worked for a call center agency for two years and applied for a loan while under their employment. I have since resigned and moved to another agency. I just learned that the company I previously worked for didn't pay my monthly contributions to Pag-ibig even if they have deducted it from my salary. I am now listed as a delinquent and I want to change that status. How can I do so? So, parang, yes. ito yeah. na yung related uh, to yeah. question mo yeah. kanina, related, so that's yes. right. So, they just have to up update it mm -hmm. uh, so that they can... Uh, we say they, the employer, of course, right? Or the or employee, the employee. Or the yes. Okay. yes, or the employee. So okay. if, if they have a problem with their employee, and then report to us uh, their situation. Right. Like uh, for example, we have also mo we have uh, monitored frequently that um, some em some types of employers do not remit. So uh, I'll not mention it anymore. But yeah. then we do our enforcement work against such mm. employers. Right. What if it's a small employer? Kunwari it's yeah. a contractor, tapos mahirap habulin, then what can, for instance, Albert do here? Kung gusto niya na talaga mag-loan, can he just update his payments yes. himself? Yeah. He can, Abonado he can na do that, yes. Yeah, just to be able so, to secure the loan. No? As a self-employed, so if you're self-employed, uh, uh, you are required to contribute 200 pesos uh, monthly instead yeah, of 100, 100 pesos, and then yeah. the employer counterpart is 100 pesos. Okay. All right. Now, our next question is from Jella, and she asks, I am a new graduate and newly employed. Am I legible to apply for a Pagibig loan, or do I have to wait for a number of years working for my company to be able to apply? Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the new rule now uh, is that they don't, we don't have a seasoning period. I say that it's a new rule because most of our members are used to the old rule that yeah. we had a two-year seasoning period. Uh, but now, uh, out of consideration for the OFW, so we want to capture the years that they have contracts overseas. So we said that we will just require the new members uh, to pay an up a uh, graded contribution. So for example, for if, if they want to borrow 1 million pesos, there's a corresponding upgraded contribution times 24 months. So that's the equivalent total savings mm -hmm. uh, that you will put into Pag-ibig Fund uh, under the old rule. Okay. So for example, for 1 million pesos, we'll require them uh, a lump sum amount of 10,800 pesos. Uh -huh. And then you can already then avail. So mm -hmm. if you don't have the lump sum amount, you can wait for the two years. I okay. See. Yeah, okay. So, but right. at least for those two years, um, na, that you can contribute right away, uh, around, for instance, one hundred pesos per month if you're employed, 
and you want to borrow, then 2,400 is enough for you to apply for a loan. Uh, for two years. Yeah, it's the equivalent yeah, two, of four two years. Times, yeah. yeah, so at four, four, eight for, four, eight, yeah. for the two years. For the two years. Ah, okay. Then that's when you... Now, I, I can understand it's a, it's a housing loan. You obviously have, uh, well, the house or the property itself as kind of collateral. collateral. For right. the other multi-purpose loans, what, what collateral do you use or is yes. required? Okay, so for the multi-purpose loan, because it's a loan against the savings, it's actually the savings, the savings yeah. that okay. will be that mm. will serve as the collateral. Mm. So, uh, but we of course we encourage them to mm. uh, to, to not default on their loans. Uh, out of our 13.3 million Pag-ibig Fund members, 2 million of our members are um, borrowers for the multipurpose. Okay. So they are mm -hmm. more borrowers of the multipurpose than the, the uh, for housing. Multipurpose loans. includes you know, renovations, home improvements. Uh, no. or well, uh, the, the home improvement can also fall under the housing loan, mm -hmm. so if it yeah. is a big amount. Mm -hmm. But because there's a limit to the multipurpose loan, it's just 80% of the total savings, so it's not much. Mm -hmm. So the total, uh, the average amount that uh, a member can uh, borrow from us in the multipurpose loan is around 16,000 pesos, so it's not much. Okay. Okay. And Attorney Len, if you have a member who has an existing loan, can they increase the amount that they borrow? Yes, yeah, so uh, the uh, last year we increased the maximum loanable amount from 3 million to 6 million pesos. Mm -hmm. Now our rule allows for, uh, for example, two housing loans, yeah. uh, but the maximum is 6 million. So okay, if, off, off. if your first loan is 3 million, then you still have mm -hmm. a, um, an allowance for another loan for another 3 million. Okay, but okay. if you've already in the first loan pa lang, borrowed six, six million, million worth, okay. wala na. Wala na. Okay. So, okay. so you cannot increase that? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. So right now, let's take a short break. Legal Help Desk will return after these reminders. We're still watching Legal Help Desk on the Solar News Channel, and we are still joined by our guests, Attorney Darlene Marie Berberabe, President and CEO of the Pag-ibig Fund. Oh, yeah. Now let's let's ask a practical question, man, uh, Attorney Len. Um, in terms of the the process, I mean, if I, I if I go there and apply, uh, how many weeks or, or days should I wait? Okay. Let's say I, I go through the normal process. Right, right. 30 days right. after submission of the complete document. So that's right. also in our citizen's charter. Okay. Uh, so the, um, the documentary requirements would be the housing loan application. So we also already have an online housing Form. loan application. And okay. then uh, you can also schedule ahead of time. So mm. that, that's online. So pretty okay. much the system of DFA so that you can just go to our office at the appointed time okay. and then you need uh, we need the certified true copy of the title mm -hmm. we need uh, we will ask from you your income documents so contract of employment uh, uh, commission vouchers or right. income tax return and then uh, the, the uh, contract to sell or the uh, deed mm -hmm. of sale okay that's for that's for housing loans for housing or loans. construction for, of, of, of yes. home right for uh, for house construction so we will also need the, the plans Right, okay, right. so because we Bills need to make sure, right. yes, we, yeah. we need to make sure that it will be used for the construction of a house because right. most of our members also ask uh, if they can use uh, it for another use thing. it for business uh, or to okay. buy a car. Uh, so uh, okay. it's, di it's different if they're going to buy a uh, house and lot that we can check. Mm -hmm. So th there's the house and So if they lot. mix it with, for instance, I want to buy this lot and a car, you need this approve the portion of yes. a car. So Kailangan lot lang. Uh, okay, kailangan yung lot lang dahil uh, it's uh, in our charter. So Pag-ibig Fund uh, just has two mandates. Right. We're the savings program of the government. Uh, and number two, so uh, by savings, uh, it means that the money that they put in, it also earns dividends. So last year, we declared a 4.17% dividend rate. So that's oh. why we oh, also attract uh, a lot of our savers are really saving with us. And 
uh, are really upgrading their their contribution so instead of the 100 pesos a month mm -hmm. so they asked their hr to upgrade to the average is now 2000 pesos and just this year we were able to collect at, um, 2 billion uh, pesos worth of uh, upgraded, upgraded contribution con so uh, uh, without uh, mandating them to upgrade the contribution uh, so, so this is also a good alternative for our viewers out there yeah. if you're not satisfied with your bank interest rates they can actually put their money yeah. as savings in Pag-ibig and, and get four, right, potentially get a higher return. Correct. Correct. So yeah. in the last five years, of course, we could not guarantee the dividends. Yeah. But in the last five years, that I could say as our track record is that it's between five, uh, four percent to five percent. Now, if you compare that with banks, mm -hmm. uh, banks' interest rate would be uh, you're lucky to have a one, one percent, percent. Oh, yeah. per annum. Huh? Per yeah. annum, oh. and then uh, they also have tax, so right. twenty percent withholding tax while Pag-ibig we fund tax. Uh, tax free. So okay. the dividends are. Uh, so if, if you look at your, uh, we'll, we'll send you your statement of account, mm -hmm. you'll yeah. see that uh, uh, you've one third of your total savings is your contribution, one third right. is to the employer, and then one third is to the dividends. That's, wow. pretty, good, dividends. Eh? That's pretty good. Yeah. So because uh, most of the time when you talk about pagibig, you only think yeah. about the loan, just the housing yeah. loans. Correct. You don't so think of it as a, a as good a investment. Savings. Yeah, our savings. Yes. Ah. Yes. So the, that's uh, the first mandate. And then the second mandate is to invest all the money that we collect uh, seventy percent of that should be invested into housing. I okay. see. Okay. So it has to be so housing. So for, for commercial, no. Oh, oh. For Kaya, car. Kaya, hindi ka pwede umutang for businesses pwede for a car. or cars. Or uh, but garage for the car, yeah. pwede. Pwede. Oh, pwede. Right. Okay, just, just to... Uh, no. All right. Now, is there... Uh, let's talk about interest rates. No? Kasi the perception is um, that Pagibig provides lower rates. Now, okay. can you clarify this perception? Is okay. this true? So, uh, we have two programs. Uh, we have an affordable housing program and a regular program. Affordable, uh, we have uh, targeted beneficiaries, the minimum wage earners. We give them a subsidized interest rate of 4.5%, uh -huh. which is really right. the lowest in the market. Very good. Now, uh, for the minimum wage earners only. Mm -hmm. Now, for above minimum wage, we have the regular housing program and our uh, interest rate as of now, we yeah. review it quarterly, right. is 7 0.3% uh, right. to be reprised every three years. Uh, every three years. Yeah. So, so we so also have we're fixed for seven percent. Yes. For, for so seven point three. We also have uh, for fixed for thirty years. That's our maximum uh, loan okay. period. Uh, if you are, uh, if you want to be sure, and uh, you have a fixed interest rate, so it's at eleven point five percent for thirty years. Okay. okay, so thirty years. Yeah, it's yeah. a long time. Yeah, it so is. It's really competitive, no, against yeah. bank rates. Yes, 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 and and uh, the advantage for Pag-ibig Fund is that uh, those whose uh, gross income is fifty thousand or below, uh, I think, will have difficulty uh, applying having for access banks. Yeah. Uh, to, 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 to banks. banks. Yes. So I, uh, and that's why Pag-ibig Fund caters to fifty percent of the mortgage industry so most of our uh, borrowers borrow uh, se between 750,000 to 1 million pesos so in a way you cater to the underbanked you know yes. so, to some extent no? so to speak yes yeah. mm -hmm. all right oh, now we still have a lot of questions from our viewers let's continue answering them with the help of attorney Berberabe starting with Jessa I have worked for a company for three years but then resigned and took a one-year hiatus now I am working again for a new company I realized that I didn't pay the remaining balance of my Pag-ibig loan before I went on hiatus. Can I still continue paying that loan with my new company? Okay, so if, uh, if this refers to a housing loan, so we consider a loan uh, not paid for more than three months to be already in default. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm hoping that uh, it's not uh, too long a period that uh, it has been in default, so otherwise it would have been endorsed in foreclosure. So if it's still there, uh, then you can pay and make it updated. So right. you will have to pay the interest and, and penalties. penalties. Okay. Uh, but as long as you can, uh, you can revive the loan. So we'll we'll help you do that. So uh, we have uh, different steps that we are going to take. So we'll notify you, and then we'll give you the chance to you, update. You give them them all the opportunity to yes, pay. Yes, yes. Is the Pag Ibig Fund very strict in foreclosing? Mortgages. Well, in, uh, we've uh, really injected a lot of improvements in our processes in the last two years. Uh, so the answer to your question is yes. yes. So in fact, uh, we have uh, outsourced to collection 
uh, companies, Economics. the companies that are being engaged by credit card companies, by private banks, those that are accredited by our central bank. So we've also engaged them. Right. And yeah, we have really seen a lot of improvement in our collection. So it used to be that every month yeah. we would have a certain amount skidding into non-performing loans. We have, uh, for the first time, reversed it in the history of Pag-ibig Fund. So now we're really seeing that uh, people just have to be reminded uh, yes. that they have loans to pay yeah. and uh, we were able to collect. So now, uh, if it needs to be foreclosed, then uh, it, is, yeah. it, gets it foreclosed. will be foreclosed. So that's a good the, reminder yeah, to our viewers that just because the lender is a government, uh, yeah. own and controlled corporation na hindi yeah. na makukuha yung either bahay na, na may yeah. mortgage nila or that they yeah. can be relaxed in paying back yeah, their loan, di ba? Over, government oh. naman yan, it's good. <laughs> but we have to remind you, this is so, still a yeah. savings association, not yeah. a charity corporation. But it's also no? important for the stability Correct. of the fund. For no? the yeah. sustainability yeah. of the fund. If you had oh. said no, I, I would have applied. A, a, a oh, lot of people yes. would have applied already, yes. right? Oh. So that we have to, you have to balance it also, yeah. right? Okay. Alright, so our next question is from Paeng. And he asks, I'm selling my property, but it's still under pagibig. Can the responsibility of paying the remainder of my loan be transferred to the person who will buy my property? Good question. Yeah. Yes, yeah. so we, we have uh, the assumption of loan and mortgage. Okay. So the, the, the new borrower and the old borrower will just have to go to Pag-ibig Fund right. to make sure that the papers really would reflect that it has been assumed by another borrower. Mm -hmm. So be, because we've had right. cases that they say they, ha they had an internal agreement, but right. based on our records, uh, still... it was not reflected. Mm -hmm. uh, Attorney Len, is it a disqualification if the buyer of the property is not a member of Pag-ibig or is not updated in his savings payments? Yes, yeah, so if he's not a member, then we will require them them to be a member so ah, uh, what's okay. working uh, for yeah. them is that we don't have a seasoning period so yeah. they just have to uh, we will apply the rule that we will require them right. for an, uh, a lump sum payment so that they can uh, avail of uh, or they can assume, assume that loan okay. I see. now we have right. another question from Errol and he's asking us what is the minimum percentage that Pag-ibig will deduct from my salary if my loan is approved does the monthly contribution for a pag-ibig loan vary depending on the salary of the employee? So the monthly amortization will depend yeah. on the uh, loan amount mm -hmm. and the loan period. Yeah, yeah. So as I said, uh, maximum uh, period is 30 years, right. but I would advise really for them to consider a lower, a, a, a shorter, shorter period because the longer the period is, so uh, you'll realize that the first 10 years, you, you're just uh, paying the, the interest, interest. Because it's so right. high compared uh -oh. to the shorter period. Correct. So yes. the, the optimum period would be 10, 10 years. 10 years. 10 years. Right. So if you can shorter, shorten it to five years, uh, the better. So it will be dependent also on the, uh, in, the interest rate. So right. if you're the minimum wage uh, earner, yeah. so we will just uh, impose 4.5%. And sometimes, uh, if because our our interest rates are based on risks, so there are certain arrangements that lower our risk. For example, if it's salary deduction, mm -hmm. and um, uh, we have other ways that we could ensure the the collection, it could st we could still lower the interest rate. Mm -hmm. So it will depend on the. Um, on, on no, those no, factors. No, I see. And Attorney Len, this is a fixed interest rate. So if you have a contract with Pag-ibig that says for 10 years, interest rate is um, 6%, for instance, you can expect na 6% na yan. Hindi na yan tataas. Correct. Not so, like with banks. Correct. So if they, yeah, they will have the option, so we will ask them what is the repricing period that you uh, prefer, so and then we will sign an agreement. Mm. I see. Okay. So okay. the the four point five percent for the minimum for the minimum wage earners, uh, we will have a subsidy. We will give them a subsidy for ten years. Mm. Our principle is that after ten years, we're hoping that you would have uh, uh, improved your life, your, yeah. your life yeah, yeah, and then you would, should have uh, graduated right. from a minimum wage earner. All right. Now, what if uh, in a situation where you know, the, the borrower, was, you know, you had a borrower, and then midstream, while he was paying, he, he dies. Okay. Okay, what, what happens there? Okay, correct. Uh, 
Uh, that's a very uh, a good question because we also require that uh, the borrower take out an insurance. insurance. So we have a mortgage redemption insurance. So the, uh, we will ask them to pay the premium. Uh, and, the amount of the loan. Uh, for, for, for the, yes, yeah. based on the for, amount yeah. of the loan. So, for example, we had an OFW. Uh, unfortunately, so he, uh, the OFW is from Hong Kong. And then, unfortunately, she, she died. But uh, when we contacted the, the family, so, um, so there's something positive that we delivered to them, the title of the house and wow. lot. So because they yeah. thought that they were going to pay for the for the housing loan, but uh, because of the yeah. mortgage redemption insurance, so it was Pagibig Fund was fully paid, and so we we transferred the the title. So to, it helps wow. to have insurance. To have that, insurance. That, that, but but you, it's required though. It's required it's, that you, you we will insurance. require them. So right. a mortgage redemption insurance and also another insurance against fire and allied perils, right. which. Uh, which is very important, especially now when we have calamity. So yeah. we also uh, talk with the insurance company. So we're not the yeah. insur insurer, but we talk with the insurance yeah. company so that uh, they can uh, they can pay for uh, fire and allied. Yeah. So parents. for my unforeseen mm -hmm. circumstances, you're protected. The fund is protected. Yes. All right. And then right. finally, last question: Can borrowers expect na walang hidden fees or surprise fees when they? get a pag-ibig loan? Yeah, so uh, if they go to our website, so all the processing fees are there. So 1,000 peso pesos processing fee. And then uh, we'll also advise them on uh, what will be the upgraded uh, contribution mm. because it depends on the loanable amount. Uh, you'll be required to upgrade also your contribution. But don't fret because the, that's your yeah. savings. You, you can withdraw that uh, at the end of the membership period, which is normally 20 years, right. uh, plus the the dividend so that that money is yours okay one okay. one last question <laughs> uh, <laughs> is it automatic <laughs> yeah that uh, we should have a part two uh, is it automatic is the insurance though automatic it's automatic when you apply for the loan it's yes. automatic it's part yes. of the fees so right it's, it's part yeah yes. part of so we, uh, right. we will show that in the breakdown that this okay. goes to the premium all right okay. now unfortunately that's all the time that we have for tonight we would like to thank our guest attorney darlene marie Berberabe for being with us tonight. I'm attorney Rod Pumuseno. And I'm attorney Karen Jimeno. If you have any questions regarding our topic for tonight, please message us on either our Facebook or Twitter accounts. Just like Migraso Bobot, who left us this message on our Facebook page. I really appreciate your episode on stalking yesterday. I watched it with my daughter, who has a problem with their university instructor. Thank you for your comments and messages. Join us again next Monday as we discuss your legal rights. Good night.